All right, what's up everyone? So, it's been a while since I posted my last video and the reason is because I was sick as well as I've been really lazy. Started watching some TV shows, which I really should not watch TV shows because if I really enjoy that show, I have to finish that show before I do anything else. It's the same thing in video games, which is why I've really avoided that. I was almost inspired to make this video because of how bad my Wi-Fi was last night. And this led me to really think about the differences between China versus living in the States slash Canada. Today, because of the whole Wi-Fi fiasco and also because I'm too lazy to go outside to demonstrate my points for the other parts, is I kind of want to talk about living at home. Like living sort of your home environment in China versus in the USA. All right, let me start with the internet. I was getting super bad internet yesterday and this led me to be very, very frustrated. I kind of want to illustrate what I'm talking about in terms of the internet. So, okay, let me show you. So basically, our router is, so our router is right here, and it can, basically the connection speed is super good around this kitchen area. It is really good around this living room as well, but as soon as there is a gap where I go into this room, the internet speed goes from around 500 megabytes per second to around 100, and there was some issue with the internet a couple days ago, which led to the internet being at around like one megabyte per second. So I think one main thing is, I wouldn't say that the internet is bad in China, it's just that maybe in my grandparents' living situation, there just needs to be better and I kept wondering, like, isn't the internet supposed to be super fast? Like, you just have to pay for it or whatever. Turns out a lot of people don't actually pay for their internet in China. It usually gets pre-assigned to their phone plan. You kind of get the internet bundle for free, which is crazy because in the States and in Canada, you have to pay for your internet. So in terms of cost, it's definitely better in China. But the whole problem is, is that the router stability is not as good. Like, in Canada and the US, you get to like get a router and if your house is bigger, you can add like these things that will make your internet faster. You can do this in China as well. I don't know, I just feel like there needs to be like a minimum level of internet available and it is a huge issue when it's not that good. Speaking of which, for phones, the mobile data is really, really good. I think in general, it is much cheaper in China versus in Canada and US because you can get 350 meg megabytes of 5G data for just like, a couple dollars per month. Next, I kind of want to talk about the whole bathroom situation. Now, this part, I don't think I'm actually complaining too much because not just my grandparents, most people's places are kind of like this. Let me open the store. So for most, I feel like for most like Chinese families, their bathroom is kind of like this. They have the shower head here, pretty normal things. But first of all, usually in Canada, US, they have a bathtub or there might be sort of like a shower area, which is closed off. But in, let me try to wait. but in China, this is not the case. See, you have this, and then you have this door that they designed, but the problem is that the toilet is right here. Basically, when there's water, it goes through this little, which again, I don't really like this design. I think the design in Japan is the best where like the, where this little like opening drain area is actually like, you can't actually see it. Like the drain design in Japan is absolutely amazing. But like here, the drain is like not very good. Same thing with the sink. It's just like not that good. And basically you have this non-separation between the toilet and the shower, which is kind of a disaster. If you look at the designs in Canada, like the washroom doesn't need to be that big, but they have that split between like the shower versus the toilet. Whereas here, there really isn't. And this bathroom is definitely big enough to have that split, but they don't have it, which is why this is kind of a disaster. And I don't think I'm complaining because I feel like most Chinese families don't have that split. What I do appreciate are these lights though. These lights actually transmit heat while you're taking a shower. That's something that I would love to have in Canada. That's super cool. And then this design is just something that my grandparents had wanted to do. They wanted to do this European style sink area. And I don't know, it looks okay. All right, so that is the bathroom situation. Now, in terms of appliances, we have the huge central AC, which is absolutely fantastic. Look at this. Look at this huge thing. We do have this central AC, which is absolutely amazing. And you basically have AC units in every single room. Check it out. We have AC. I'm whispering right now because my grandparents are sleeping. We have AC units in like every single room. That's another AC unit. 
This one doesn't have an AC unit because I think it broke recently, but they do have this wall area where you are able to install the AC unit. Oh, and the other thing I wanted to show you guys was that broken refrigerator that we had earlier this week, but it's a super nice design. I think the brand is called Cursarty Refrigerator. Super, it has like AI or whatever, and then they'll tell you the temperature of your fridge. I do think this is pretty nicely designed. And I also like, for the people who really like cooking, you can buy this like custom like hood area, and then basically this area, this area here is supposed to absorb all of the smoke. It's a really nice closed off area and you can even close the hood as well. I don't really like these cabinet design as well as this. I think this is marble. Actually, this is not marble. I don't know what type of stone this is, but I definitely do prefer the modern quartz looking type of, uh, type of kitchen counters. But again, this might be just because my grandparents are more old school rather than what the modern design in China currently now is. However, I do think that a lot of like Chinese families, there was like this like vibe a couple of years ago where everyone just like redesigned their house to have this like European architecture type feel to it just to make their houses look, or make their apartments look more bougie. I used to really dig that stuff until everyone did it. Now I don't really like it anymore. But that goes into the appliances. Not that different from the US and Canada, other than the whole AC aspect of it. I feel like it is changing and depends on sort of the region that you live in. I know definitely in Vancouver, at least, a lot of the old apartment units didn't really have central AC, but now it's sort of mandated that every apartment unit needs to have central AC, especially after the heat wave. So again, I don't think there's that much of a difference between US and China in terms of these aspects. All right, four. Moving on to the design. Now, again, I feel like I can't really speak for everybody who lives currently in China, but the general feeling of the design in China, in my opinion, is utility over design and maximalist, ma maximal, no, maximalism over minimalism, if that makes sense. And it definitely has something to do with the level of scarcity that maybe my grandparents or parents had where like maybe when they were younger they didn't have as many things and they developed this sort of like hoarder behavior where they just like keep everything the problem is it breeds this type of aesthetic that is like kind of uncomfortable to live in here's what i mean so i wish i could give you an example of how bad my aunt's place is but this can already kind of give you a demonstration like this is my grandpa's like painting room and everything and everything's just like all like put out there, like completely not minimalistic. If you go outside, their entire counter here is filled with stuff, random crap, right? Even their kitchen table, even their kitchen table is just filled with like random things. Now, now this is not even as bad as it gets. I've gone to my aunt's place, I've gone to some friends' places in China, and it is pretty bad. Their entire room, like, like basically they have situations where like their washroom is completely filled with like stuff. And I asked them why, and they're just like, oh, we don't have a storage room, so we have to like use the washroom as a storage room. Now, my grandma has the same situation there. And again, I feel like the reason is because of the fact that there was a lot of scarcity when they were younger. And now in a world of abundance, having this sort of hoarder maximalist type of behavior is just scary because you just end up keeping a lot of things and it's just, it just piles up. It's, it's, a, it's a disaster. In addition to that, if you look outside, like the outdoor design of the buildings are just so ugly. Like there is no like, I feel like a designer needs to just come in and just make it like, look at this outside building. Look at how ugly this is. Now, again, in commercial areas in China versus like America, it's kind of similar. It kind of looks like commercial buildings, but definitely in these more residential areas, there's a lot to be desired in terms of the outdoor exterior building aesthetic. One thing that I really enjoy about China, and I guess I am taking advantage of the labor laws in China, but basically if you do need somebody, they're available right away. Like when I had the internet issue, the next day somebody came in, a technician came in to help me fix it. Uh, when I need something delivered to me, it can be done within like half an hour to an hour. So manual labor is definitely less expensive compared to in Canada and US where labor laws are probably more mature and they have better salary, so it is more expensive for the consumer. So speaking in terms of a consumer perspective, I absolutely love that because the labor is super cheap. I, I've gotten to the point where I feel super bad that I want to tip them, but there's no tip culture in China. So again, those types of things are super convenient here versus in America where it is much more expensive.
For me, at least, taking all of this together, I feel like definitely when you go to different countries, there are different advantages. One of the things for me, at least, that I wanted to take away from this is that I would love for there to be a universal design feel to a living space that can just be given to everybody. Now, it could start as something basic, like maybe everyone has like a basic IKEA design couch, a basic internet that is at a survivable speed, not one megabyte per second, have, you know, a certain basic aesthetic to their bathrooms, their kitchens, their daily living situation. And that could be applied universally for everyone. It doesn't have to, like, it doesn't have to matter which country you're in. I would love to have that. And in addition to that, you could have maybe even like a luxury edition where you could add other things. Like for example, I really enjoy having a standing desk as a software engineer. That would be something I would love to have. And it would be super cool to have a WeWork style, but for living instead. It would be super cool. I mean, I feel like I am talking about like hotel chains where people go to like different places and the hotel chains will have like pretty similar things, but it would be super cool if people could just like rent a space and it would have almost the same aesthetic of your primary space in a certain country. That would be absolutely amazing. Like right now it's probably sort of like a luxury thing for a lot of people who have like the means to do that. It'd be super cool to figure out a business model with like a really economic way where people can enjoy that and have sort of the basic things. All right, I might make a video about sort of the food, subway, high-speed rails, personal transportation, environment, things like that, but that'll be a future video. Stay tuned for that. Peace guys.